emerging ro role of RNA in heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Now, heart failure is a clinical syndrome we all know. It's characterized by symptoms of breathlessness and easy fatigability and signs of fluid retention, such as elevated JDP, pulmonary crackles, ankle edema, that result from impaired ability of the heart to maintain a cardiac output that meets the metabolic needs of the body. Approximately 50% of the patients with heart failure have normal or near normal left ventricular systolic heart function with an ejection fraction more than 50% and LV and diastolic volume index less than 97 ml per meter square. These patients are described as having heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. These patients have an abnormal LV diastolic function, incomplete LV relaxation due to increased myocardial stiffness. But it is becoming a dominant form of heart failure in older, older adults all throughout the world, comprising around 40 to 50% of hospital admissions. It is due in part to the increasing longevity of the population. And by this year, it was estimated that around 8% of the United States and the European population older than 65 will have heart failure preserved ejection fraction. However, the first description was in 1966 when test by cardia with in decreased elasticity of the heart, also known as senile heart disease, was first described in elderly individuals. The most common patients are the elderly women with comorbid conditions, those with hypertension and LVH, ischemic heart disease, atrial fibrillation, obesity, diabetes, renal disease, and COPD. In addition, women, as they age, they develop greater systemic arterial stiffness and LV stiffness, which results in concentric remodeling and heart failure, preserved ejection fraction. The conditions that contribute are obesity, hypertension, CAD, atrial fibrillation, diabetes mellitus, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, obstructive sleep apnea, and anemia. If you see this comparative between preserved and reduced ejection fraction, you will find that obesity, diabetes, hypertension, chronic disease, kidney disease are more common in these uh, subgroup, as well as women are more affected than men. LV remodeling is concentric and LV ejection fraction is preserved. The therapies that decrease mortality are none present at this point of time with preserved, whereas beta blockers, AC inhibitors, and even RNA are class one indicators of reducing mortality in reduced ejection fraction group. Is it a very safe disease? No, the annual mortality is 8% per year, but increases to approximately 10 to 12% in patients more than 70 years. The prognosis after first hospitalization is one year mortality rates are very high, 25%. And five year mortality rate nears 50%. 30% of the patients die of non-cardiac causes. The predictors of the death being advanced age, increased systolic BP, atrial fibrillation, prior cerebrovascular even, renal insufficiency or other major organ dysfunction with sepsis. What about the pathophysiology? We know that there is a diastolic dysfunction. We know that there is an increased ventricular stiffness, diastolic. We know that there is slow LV relaxation, leading to increased LV filling pressures. But the current hypothesis includes that there are the pathophysiologic mechanisms involved are cardiomyocyte titin hypophosphorylation, vascular endothelial cell inflammation and dysfunction, abnormal calcium homeostasis, increased ventricular matrix formation, and obesity. Since we are in a echocardiographic conference, for diagnosis, echo plays a very, very important role. The indices of dysfunction are, we all know, EA ratio more than equal to two. This is just a revision. The abnormal E, the normal EA, we know it's 0.8, but if you have tachycardia, AV blocks, and LVDB, it becomes difficult as EA diffuse. Increased left atrial pressure measured by E by E prime ratio, and E by E by E prime ratio more than 14 is a significant LV dysfunction. However, if the lateral mitral annulus E prime velocity is not quantifiable, we take the septal, and in that case, the ratio will be more than 15. Absolute lateral mitral E prime velocity less than 10 centimeter per second or septal E prime mitral annular velocity less than 7.0 centimeters per second are indicators. But a very important factor is an echocardiographic determination of global longitudinal strain 
which differentiates it from patients with hypertension and normal controls. These patients have minus 16.505, whereas in hypertension and normal controls, it's minus 18.58 and minus 19.59, respectively. Pulmonary artery systolic pressure more than 35 is indicative of pulmonary arterial hypertension in patients who do not have significant pulmonary disease. However, only echocardiographic uh, criteria should not be relied upon in isolation. So a scoring system has come up now and the scoring system shows body mass index. Points are awarded, body mass index, hypertension, atrial fibrillation, pulmonary arterial systolic pressure, age, and E, e prime ratio more than nine. They have all points awarded against it. And if the score is six to nine, the probability of each heart failure preserved with atrial fraction is high. If it is less zero to one, it's very low. Two to five is intermediate, which requires additional testing. So now we come to the topic that how army is proposed to be helpful in heart failure preserved ejection fraction if we look back a recapitulation of the pathophysiology we find that obesity hypertension diabetes copd and renal disease leads to systemic inflammation which leads to vascular epithelial cell dysfunction which leads to increased free radical oxygen which leads to decreased titin phosphorylation decreased calcium handling increased myocardial intracellular matrix leading to cardiac hypertrophy and the disease. So, in army, we have valsartan and sacubitril in combination. Valsartan is an angiotensin 2 receptor antagonist <coughs> and thereby <coughs> prevents the ill effects of angiotensin 2. So, thus it decreases sympathetic tone, it decreases left ventricular hypertrophy, decreases fibrosis, it decreases aldosterone induced fluid and water retention. Whereas sacubitril prevents the BNP from being destroyed by neprilicin. Therefore, the positive effects of BNP with decreasing sympathetic tone, vasodilatation, decreasing left ventricular hypertrophy, fibrosis, and decreasing aldosterone, diuresis, natriuresis all come into play together. And this probably is going to help a patient of heart failure preserved ejection fraction. That was the postulation. There were other therapies which reduced or improved in vascular endothelial function like statins, angiotensin receptor blockers, and phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. They have proven ineffective in improving the morbidity or mortality of patients with heart failure, preserved ejection fraction. So the search is on. And therefore, ARMI with a good results in reduced ejection fraction was proposed to help here. The clinical trials that we had with ARNI, the Paradigm Heart Failure, the landmark trial was the reduced ejection fraction, followed by Pioneer, which was decompensated heart failure, and then came Paragon Heart Failure, which was in preserved ejection fraction. The paradigm shows that in patients with heart failure reduced ejection fraction, there was a composite cardiovascular mortality and hospitalization secondary to heart failure, significant reduction over and above NLA pre. The cardiovascular mortality, heart failure, hospitalization, all cause mortality and change in Kansas City cardiovascular questionnaires were significantly improved. And that led to significant reduced risk in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality to those patients taking NLA pre. Thereby, it came as a class one indication in management of heart failure, reduced ejection fraction. It was further bolstered by pioneer heart failure in acute decompensated heart failure, where they measured a significant reduction in N-terminal BNP concentration from baseline through weeks four and eight, vis-a-vis -vis NLR print. And there was a significant decrease in anti-pro BNP concentration with ARNI from baseline through four weeks and eight weeks. So it concluded that there was a greater reduction in anti-proBNP concentration with valsartan and sacubitril compared to enalapril. These two studies led to a difference in thought whether Paragon will replicate the same in heart failure preserved ejection fraction, where the hypothesis was reduction in cardiovascular mortality and heart failure hospitalization, both first and recurrent. The primary outcome of cardiovascular mortality and hospitalization secondary to heart failure definitely was reduced by 13%, but it did not reach significance. 
<clears throat> all cause mortality change in cancer city cardiovascular questionnaire nih class change none of them re reached significance although patients with sacubitril varsartan had significantly more patients with improved nih class and less unchanged or worsened nih patients there was less death from renal failure end stage renal disease decrease in gfr less than 50% from the baseline but none of them reached significance so ultimately it became the question so near yet so far now we know this that these patients are in a desperate situation there are no good therapeutic strategies for them so far excepting risk factor control and diuretics in paragon heart failure the key result was that there was a marginal 13% reduction in primary outcome a combination of cardiovascular disease and totality of hospitalizations however we just missed the level of significance although there was a clear signal of efficacy but it was not significant from the biostatistician it was learned that we needed just seven more events to reach statistical significance so what went wrong first selection of the group of patients now a heart failure preserved ejection fraction had a very diverse a very diverse group from an ejection fraction of uh, 40% to 57% there were a wide range of patients some came within a heart failure mid range ejection fraction group and so forth second 70% patients were treated with ace inhibitors or arv so valsartan itself may already had have some benefit it was postulated that heart failure preserved ejection fraction is a disease that evolves over years whereas heart failure reduced ejection fraction can occur immediately after myocardial infarction so it was question that how can you reverse a disease that has evolved over years within 24 months it is not an easy undertaking besides it is a mixed disease so maybe it will require a longer term follow up of the more intermediate risk patients and then we might detect signals of mortality benefit however following paragon another study came up the parallax study which had 2572 patients with symptomatic heart failure with lbef greater than 40% the trial met one of the two co primary endpoints remember the mean ejection fraction was 57% at 12 weeks the reduction in antiproBNP was 16% greater in the sacubitril valsartan arm and we know that reduction in antiproBNP is a very encouraging sign in heart failure management however at 24 weeks there was no significant difference between the two groups enalapril ace inhibitor enalapril and the arv valsartan group and the 6 minute walk distance also showed no significant difference so though the angiotensin receptor nephrilsin inhibitor led to a greater reduction in n terminal b type natriuretic peptide compared with individualized medical therapy it did not significantly boost the 6 minute walk distance therefore take home should be it is encouraging but we have seen other studies where we have some biomarkers which show a trend but there isn't any hard point difference hard end point difference and the other objective measured 6 minute walk test also wasn't difference therefore there is nothing at present here and combined with paragon that i can suggest that you routinely add this to heart failure preserved ejection fraction patients that is not clear from the real world trial data the other studies are in the offing for example paraglide which have not started recruiting yet they have heart failure patient with acute decompensated heart failure others in different spectrum however to sum up we may say that heart failure preserved ejection fraction is a diverse group of patients who are desperate to find out mortality lowering benefits which are not yet with them arni has shown significant results with reduced ejection fraction and was postulated to be very helpful in preserved ejection fraction too. but the real world data from paragon and parallax till date 
does not suggest that it should be a regular must adjuvant to the heart failure preserve ejection fraction therapy over and above diuretics and risk factor control hope we are, are very close yet very far now but the subsequent trials with better trial designs and different trial designs different recruitment and different endpoints may lead us to a position where rne will be helpful in patients with heart failure preserve ejection fraction thank you thank you